Hello all, welcome to my channel Brainy Beardo. In this session, we'll be learning about how to apply the Bernoulli's equation to measure the fluid flow that is flowing inside a pipe. Okay, and the device that we're going to learn is called as the Venturi meter. Now, what is a Venturi meter? A Venturi meter is a device which is used to measure the discharge of a fluid flowing through a pipe. Now, when we say discharge, it is nothing but the volume flow rate of a fluid. The Venturi meter is fixed between a pipe where the fluid is flowing. Now, the diameter of the Venturi meter is same as the diameter of this particular pipe, okay, through which the fluid is flowing. Now, this Venturi meter has three major parts. The first part where the cross-section area of the Venturi meter reduces from the cross-section area of the pipe to a minimum cross-section area, that particular portion is called as the convergent part. Okay, and the second portion is where the minimum cross section area is maintained, and that particular cross section area or that particular part is called as the throat. Now, the third part, the third major part, is a portion where the cross section area increases from the throat area to the pipe area. So, that particular portion is called as the divergent part. Now, this Venturi meter works on a simple principle that is called as the Bernoulli's equation where when the fluid flows through this convergent part, the fluid experiences a pressure change because we know that when the area reduces, the pressure reduces and the velocity increases. Now, this difference in pressure between these two ends of this convergent part is measured and with the help of that particular pressure difference, we can calculate the discharge Q. Now, let us see how to calculate the discharge Q with the help of the pressure difference, right? Now, let us consider a Venturi meter and let us assume that the fluid is entering from the left side and it is flowing through the right side. Now, somewhere close to the inlet of the convergent part and inside the pipe, very close to the convergent part, let us assume a particular section and let us call it as section 1. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to fix a piezometer in this particular section. Now, what happens inside a piezometer? Because of the pressure of the fluid at section 1, the fluid rises through the piezometer to a particular height. And let us assume that particular height has to be as H1, okay? Now, this H1 indicates the pressure of the fluid at section 1. Now, similarly, when the fluid passes through this convergent part, we know that the pressure is going to reduce. Now, and the pressure is going to be minimum when it reaches the throat section. So, let us assume the throat section has to be as section 2. And again, we are going to fix a piezometer in this section 2 as well. Now, because of the pressure of the fluid inside the section 2, the fluid is again going to rise inside the piezometer, but it is not going to rise up to the height of the first piezometer. So, the height of the fluid in the second piezometer, let us assume it to be as H2. Now, as you can see, between the first piezometer and the second piezometer, there is a height difference, right? And that difference in height, let us call it as H, okay? Now, for the sake of derivation, let us assume the diameter of the pipe to be as D1 and the diameter of the throat to be as D2, okay? Now, we all know that when a fluid flows inside a pipe, that particular fluid has some pressure and velocity. So, let us assume at section 1, the pressure of the fluid is P1 and the velocity of the fluid is V1 and because of this diameter D1, the cross-section area at section 1 is A1. Similarly, at section 2, the pressure is P2, the velocity is V2, and the area is A2. Now, we all know that a Venturi meter is used to find out the discharge of the fluid, right? So, which means we have to use a discharge equation. So, the simplest discharge equation that we all know is from the continuity equation, which says Q is equal to A1 into V1, which is also equal to A2 into V2. Now, as you can see, either we can use Q is equal to A1 V1 or we can use Q is equal to A2 into V2. So, what we are going to do here is to find a final expression for this Q, okay, we are going to find out the value of V1 or V2. Either of this we are going to find out and substitute into this equation to find get a final expression for Q. And let us call this uh, discharge equation as equation number 1. Now, to find an expression for V1 and V2, what we are going to do is, we are going to apply the Bernoulli's principle or the Bernoulli's equation across section 1 and section 2. So, when we apply the Bernoulli's principle, what happens is, the equation is P1 by rho g plus V1 square by 2g 
plus z1 is equal to p2 by rho g plus v2 square by 2g plus z2. Now, as you can see, we have assumed that the venturi meter is horizontal. So, what happens when the venturi meter is horizontal? This value of z1 and z2 will be the same. So, what happens is we can cancel out the z1 and z2. So, the remaining equation would be p1 by rho g plus v1 square by 2g is equal to p2 by rho g plus v2 square by 2g. Now, what we are going to do in this equation is we are going to rearrange this equation such a way that keep all the pressure terms onto one side and all the velocity terms onto the other side. So, what happens is we get p1 by rho g minus p2 by rho g is equal to v2 square by 2g minus v1 square by 2g. Okay. Now, let us keep this equation aside. Now, what we are going to do is as we know, we have a piezometer here. Now, we know that this piezometer works in the principle of hydrostatic law. Now, the hydrostatic law states that P is equal to rho g h. So, which means when I apply the same equation across pressure P1 and across pressure P2, we do get P1 is equal to rho g h1 and P2 is equal to rho g h2. Now, when we rearrange this equation, we'll get to know that P1 by rho g is equal to h1 and P2 by rho g is equal to h2. So, which means here in this equation, I have P1 by rho g minus P2 by rho g, which is nothing but instead of P1 by rho g minus P2 by rho g, I can substitute it as h1 minus h2. Okay. So, in this equation, by replacing P1 by rho g and P2 by rho g, we get h1 minus h2 is equal to v2 square by 2g minus v1 square by 2g. Now, as you can see in the diagram, h1 minus h2 is equal to h. So, it becomes h is equal to v2 square by 2g minus v1 square by 2g. Now, let us call this as equation number 2. Now, as you can see here, we have both v1 term as well as v2 term. Okay, and I told you earlier, we need to find an expression for either v1 or v2, not both, right? So, what we do is, we'll have to eliminate one of the velocity terms. To eliminate one of the velocity terms, what you're going to do is, we are going to use the continuity equation. So, which the continuity equation says, a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2. So, let us say, uh, let us go, let us say we are going to eliminate the v1 term. So, what we are going to do is, we will be rearranging this equation in such a way that v1 will be on to one side and all other terms will be on to the other side. So, it becomes v1 will be equal to a2 v2 divided by a1. Now, I will substitute the value of v1 in equation 2. So, it happens h will be equal to v2 square by 2g minus instead of v1, I will write, write it as a2 v2 by a1 the whole square divided by 2g. Now, since I'll take this a2 by a1 outside, so it becomes v2 square by 2g minus a2 square by a1 square into v2 square by 2g. Okay. So, as you can see, this a, uh, v2 square by 2g is common. So, when I take this v2 square by 2g common, we get v2 square by 2g into 1 minus a2 square by a1 square. Okay. Now, in this equation, we are going to expand the 1 in the bracket. So, when we expand it, we get h is equal to v2 square by 2g into a1 square minus a2 square divided by a1 square. Now, again, since we need to find the value of velocity, so that is v2 here. So, what we will do is we will rearrange this equation in such a way that v2 is on one side and all other terms are on to the other side. So, we get v2 square is equal to 2gh into a1 square divided by a1 square minus a2 square. Okay, so since it is v2 square, we need to take a root to find out the value of v2. So, v2 will be equal to under root of 2gh into a1 square by a1 square minus a2 square. So, when we simplify this further, we get a1 by root of a1 square minus a2 square into root of 2gh. So, this expression would be the value of v2. Okay. So, again, what we are going to do is we are going to substitute this equation of V2 in the continuity equation. So, since we have found out the value of V2, so Q will be equal to A2 into V2. That is the equation that we are going to use. So, equation 1 implies Q is equal to A2 into V2. That will be equal to A2 into A1 by root of A1 square minus A2 square into root of 2GH. Okay. So, when we uh, simplify this, we get Q is equal to a1 a2 into root of a1 square minus a2 square into root of 2gh. So, this is the equation for discharge q. But if you look one thing over here, 
This discharge equation Q was derived from the Bernoulli's equation. But then the Bernoulli's equation itself was derived with a lot of assumptions. But there was, which means there is no losses at all, right? So which means this discharge Q gives you an equation where the losses are not considered. So basically, this Q is not the actual discharge. So we can call this Q as to be as the theoretical discharge. So we can replace Q with Q theoretical. So QTH will be A1 A2 divided by root of A1 square minus A2 square into root of 2GH. Now we all know that the actual discharge will be less than the theoretical discharge. So to consider the losses, okay, we are going to define a new term that is called as CD, which is nothing but called as the coefficient of discharge. Okay, And the equation would be Q actual divided by Q theoretical. That's a ratio of the actual discharge by the theoretical discharge. Okay, So from this you can understand that Q actual will be CD into Q theoretical. right? So what we're going to do is, if you just multiply CD to this particular equation, we automatically get Q actual. right? So the Q actual will be equal to CD into A1, A2 divided by root of A1 square minus A2 square into root of 2GH. Now, this equation is called as the actual discharge, okay, that is flowing through a venturi meter. And always remember, the value of CD will always be less than 1, okay. Now, the H term in the discharge equation is obtained from the piezometers. But fixing a piezometer in section 1 and section 2 is impractical because if the fluid pressure in the pipe is very high, the length of the piezometer should also be very high. So, in practical applications, these piezometers is replaced by a U-tube differential manometer. Now, where the difference in the manometric fluid level gives the pressure difference between section 1 and section 2. Now, if we assume that the reading in the manometer is x, now this value of x is not equal to this value of h. So, this x and h is totally different. So, we need to convert this value of x to H. So to do that, we have a formula which says H is equal to X into rho m by rho f minus 1, where rho m is called as the density of the manometric fluid and rho f is called as the density of the fluid flowing inside the pipe. Okay. So this comes to the end of the session. I hope you guys have understood how to the concept of venturi meter and how to derive an expression for actual discharge for the fluid uh, flow that happens inside a venturi meter. If you like my video, do subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. Thank you so much.